I'm joined tonight by David Bowles from the RSPCA and dog expert or behaviour expert, Dr. Roger, Roger Mugford. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me tonight. I mean, shocking, of course, what happened to, to that uh, little girl, Jade Anderson. Um, but across the country, we're seeing 16 people a day hospitalised because of dog bites. Just how big a problem is this, Dr. Roger? In the total scheme of things, of all accidents and injuries of any sort, from roads and road accidents and the like, and from other animals, including, say, from cattle, about three, four people a year are killed by cows. Um, 30, 40 people per year are killed by horses. Do we have a dangerous horse legislation? No. Hundreds of people every year are seriously injured. they're not injured. attacked, are they? That's and the difference, is that you fall off a horse, but a horse doesn't attack and kill you, does it? I mean, you know, this is a serious business, isn't and of it? Course, Even tonight, a two-year-old girl in hospital yeah. because of a rock fire. And a family member by the family dog, and that's a, that's a classic scenario where legislation can't really intervene because it's happening in people's own homes, and often it's family members. So more than half of all the uh, dog bite accidents reported to hospitals concern the family dog are, are biting them. So it's not a dog on a stranger. So really, this is an area where the law cannot intervene, where education, better socialization, better sourcing of puppies, better access to training services, people like me intervening at an early stage, people like me doing something practical like telling people to put a muzzle on their dog before it goes out on the street and, and whilst under training. These very much more practical things are going to achieve a change in behavior of human beings and of dogs which I'm afraid stiffer sentences, even laughably a life sentence, which is more than you would get from killing somebody with your motor car. Okay, David, let's get the RSPCA. possibly achieve. Okay, let's bring in um, your views, David, from the RSPCA. Do you support the government here, or do you think that, that you know, there's enough laws already and it's actually intervention early? Well, what, what we're talking about is, is a reform of the Dangerous Dogs Act, which is 22 years old and has patently failed to do what it was set out to do by the government 22 years ago, which is reduce the number of dog bites and reduce those dogs which are dangerously out of control. What the government is announcing today is an increase in penalties, which the RSPCA is sympathetic to supporting, so, but... So, some, you would be happy, for, or happy, maybe that's not the right adjective, but you, the RSPCA would back someone going to jail for life if, if their dog was to kill someone? No, what, what the RSPCA would back would be an increase from the present two years, and as Roger rightly says, at the moment it's not an offence for a dog to um, be dangerously out of control in the home. That will change, what which we also What about life in jail? Because that that's on support. the table. What about that? What, what with the RSPCA supports is to bring in some measures which are stronger than they are at the moment. We, we believe, actually, that the Minister is right. We need to look at um, measuring this against dangerous driving offences, careless driving okay. offences. But this is just dealing with... But a life with, imprisonment? What, to answer this, me on that question. What would the RSPCA think of that? Uh, I, I think the RSPCA would have some sympathy with, with Roger that we need to get this into context. What the government is doing here is only dealing with the after effects of an attack. What they're not dealing with is preventing those attacks in the first place. And they're also not dealing with the enforcement issues. So they're just dealing with one out of the three issues that if we're going to turn around this horrific downward trend that we're seeing in dog bites and dogs out of control, we need to get hold of the dog owner because they're the problem. They need better education. They need better training. Um Roger, before we talk about preventative measures, I just want to get your opinion on Jane Ad Anderson, um, who died in March of this year. Mm. A lot of people, including our own viewers, uh, are emailing in saying, this poor 14-year-old was mauled by four dogs. The dogs thrown up have been destroyed, but no criminal action has been taken. They don't understand how that's possible. Mm. And you believe that the law's fine. How can well, you say because, that? Because, in fact, the, 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 those owners could have been prosecuted. Uh, firstly, th there was a neglect issue. The dogs were not exercised. They were not normally socialised dogs. They were just dogs locked up in, a, in someone's backyard. So uh, they're not typical, of, th thankfully, of British dog ownership. But, but secondly, the, the, the original Dogs Act, 1871, does apply to private places. So she was a visitor, and she could have been also sued under the what's called the Occupiers Liability Act. So there are two pieces of legislation which are rarely used or insufficiently used because the always this belief is that the Dangerous Dogs Act is more appropriate. The difference is one is a civil course of action, but with serious penalties, two years imprisonment still under the Dogs Act, and, and hefty fines. Um, and, and this instrument isn't used often enough. There are other pieces of legislation, obviously Offences Against the Person Act. Um, if I knowingly set my dog, maybe a pit bull, um, against somebody during the course of my drug running, um, then I can be sued under, oh, I, sorry, I could be criminally liable under other legislation. So we don't need specifically dog legislation. We need, we, it's about abusive people who are violent and using a dog as part of that violent okay. behaviour. 
Um, lots and lots of tweets. Let's look, uh, look over a couple of them now. Ella Jane Brookbank says, dog owners should be made more responsible. I'm a dog owner. My pet, my choice, my responsibility. Carla Stepney says, people should have to get a license to own a dog. End of it. It saves a lot of dogs from being abused and mistreated as well. And that's a very good point, isn't it, David Bowles? Because yeah. we have car licenses. Why don't we have dog licenses? Well, it is a good point. And I think the government made a huge mistake 25 years ago when they got rid of the dog, the dog license. Not only because they got rid of the, uh, the revenue that it produces, but it also broke the link between the dog and its owner. People do not realise nowadays that when they get a dog, they are responsible for it. It's not a right, it's a responsibility. It's far too easy to get dogs at the moment off the internet without understanding what their behaviour needs are, what the training their needs are, and what their welfare needs are. And that's why we're in the problem that we are at the moment. And Roger, should, should the dangerous dog or the banned dog list be expanded? Should it include, no. for example, Staffordshire no. Bull ter Terriers, no. Pit Bull Terriers? Well, you say that, but they're they, disproportionately responsible for a lot of the attacks in this country. People are very, people are scared of them. They, sh they shouldn't be, and they needn't be. I mean, Staffordshire Bull Terriers are not the, the demon dogs. Um, maybe demon owners have trained them to be demon dogs, but in themselves, inherently, Staffordshire Bull Terriers, believe me, are... But if they were banned, very, it would make a difference, wouldn't well, it? We couldn't. We're, we're talking about three, four hundred thousand in the whole country, so they're very popular animals in all parts of the UK. And, and the... Breed specific legislation, sometimes known as BSL, if you tweet or, or um, Google that, um, you will find so many outraged people around the world who know that be breed specific okay. legislation has not been effective. And most, uh, most countries are going back from, from breed specific legislation into focusing on the owner, which is exactly what they the should deed, be doing. Not the breed. And, and I would say, in defence of this government, never thought I would say this, um, that they are intending to introduce compulsory microchipping, which will be a good step forward. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me tonight.